one of the things about OTCs is they sort of have this reputation of like inherent risk, right? And there's different tiers to them and sort of warnings that are given for, for these types of stocks. And for anybody who's listening that might not be so familiar with OTCs, um, I'm kind of curious to get your perspective on, you know, whether you were worried about some of the the caveats, you know, and the sort of issues, the promotions that happened, the bankruptcies of, of all these different warnings and tiers with OTCs. Was that something that worried you at all when you were going long the stocks or, or did you approach it in a, a different kind of way? Um, I, I kind of heard, I heard that, but that almost helped me because I went into the trade more scared that, that I'm trading this crap and I know, I know it's worthless, right? So I'm just trading it. And once like that trend shifted, I'd get out. And a lot of the times that I noticed with the OTCs, if they were going to do something um, very sketchy, then it would kind of, it almost always have like a weak close. Like somebody kind of knew all the time if something bad was going to come out after hours or whatever it was going to be. So I'd say I actually never got caught in um, a halt on an OTC going long which uh, which is good. And I pretty much have caught like 50% of the CEs going short. Um, just, I do a lot of like a quick look, like does it have a stock promotion flag? Does it have the CE? Does it have uh, dark and defunct? And then you kind of get an idea of, of what you're trading. And there is some good OTCs. Like we saw a lot of OTCs actually uplist to the NASDAQ. Uh, actually, one that's been pretty active this year, SBFM. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably traded that one. I think that one was a pretty active trader the last, uh, like, three months ago. That was actually an OTC. I remember trading it at, uh, like, a couple cents. So just a little interesting tidbit there. Um, you, you had mentioned, you know, certain flags, dark and defunct, things like that. Um, where were you getting your, your research, and where would you research the OTCs? I use this website called otcmarkets.com and you can just type in the ticker and uh, it also has like filings and it's like, it's a really nice website for OTCs. It'll show you the most uh, dollar volume OTC traded on the day. You can do a bunch of scans on it. Um, I actually knew a bunch of people who used to just scan with OTC markets for filings, but now you have like the BAM sack and all that stuff. Uh, But it's not a bad website at all. And that's the where I would go. Great. And for researching some of the OTC names, did you find yourself doing any of the like fundamental analysis, taking a look at share structure, who the executives were, what their their filing, their numbers were, things like that? Or were you more interested in like the technical analysis and chart pattern setup for you? Yeah, so for me, it was mainly the chart pattern and the, the trade setup, but I did go off on um, a couple benders where I would just try to figure out like a lot of information and I did get into a couple trades that um, I saw something in the filings that I, that I thought would make it go up and it just turns out taking like six to 12 months and since it's an OTC it's probably like you're probably red on your position anyway so it was just it was very draining to swing trade some of these just if you kind of saw something in the filings where I could just wait for the next OTC with volume and hop on that and make my money and then exit and um that's where i where i did a lot better was um just trading the otcs with the the framework and the technical analysis but i did do my fair share of, of researching it because i thought it was a way to make um more money so I'm, of course i'm gonna do some research but that's about it were you able to trade the otc stocks on any given broker or did you find that certain brokers were better suited to trading these types of stocks? Yeah, so you have your direct access brokers with Bass, like Centerpoint, Cobra, Guardian, Speed Trader, et cetera. And those are garbage for OTCs because you need that, um, you need, you, if you trade per share and you're trading 3 million shares and you're paying like 0.002 or 0.01, whatever it is, like you're gonna spend a ton in, in commissions. So you can't use one of those brokers. And then you have brokers like uh, TD Ameritrade, which I know a lot of people use TD Ameritrade, but I don't particularly like them because of the level two on TD Ameritrade. I actually go with E-Trade. E-Trade has a nice level two. And um, 
E-Trade has some problems sometimes, like sometimes stuff will freeze or whatever it is. But for the most part, I've done all my trading with them on the OTC side and it's been good. And then you also have options like Fidelity, but uh, I've just stuck with my um, E-Trade and that's been the best for me. And also my friends that trade OTCs, I've most of them use uh, E-Trade and a couple of them use Thinkorswim because we just don't have that. We can't trade per share. And also, um, I don't really like the way that DAS portrays an OTC, especially like the really cheap ones. Like if it's a below 10 cents, you can't really um, see the, the level two because you have like the amount of shares, right? And if somebody's bidding like 20 million shares on this OTC, it'll be like 20 mil and then all these zeros, whereas um, E-Trade will just show you 200K. Uh, and you'll just see how many thousands are on it. So I thought that was way better on my eyes to to read the tape. Good to know. And when you're trading OTCs, um, do you also have similar like issues with borrowing to, if you wanted to short or can you even short OTCs? Is it, you know, how similar is it to some of the, the, the type of momentum uh, stock situation for shorting? Yeah, so I do short OTCs. I um, I don't short them too too much. I had a bunch of OTC shorts last year because everything went from you know five cents to five bucks. But most of the time, I'm not shorting any OTCs. Especially, I won't even really consider something a short unless it's at least like 50, 60, 70 cents, and I think I can pull back 50 percent. Um, just because it's it's going to be hard to to execute and it's going to cost you a lot borrowing a ton of shares and, and paying a per share on everything as well as the liquidity issues you have plus the chance that it skips up and you know it's only at 70 cents so who knows how high it can go um and so i don't short too many otcs but most of the brokers that i named before um they do offer otc trading so i'll just trade i'll short um short the otcs there not at e-trade you trade won't allow it. So do you tend to be primarily a long bias trader when it comes to the OTCs? And are you mostly intraday or do you ever swing some of these uh, for, for a couple of days? Yeah, so I'm primarily long bias um, on the OTCs. And I think right now uh, my overall profits are like 60% long, 40% short. And so it's just a little bit more towards the short, uh, towards the long side. I was more short bias in 2018 and 2019 on the OTCs. But then when stuff just started going, when I saw like multiple thousand percent moves, I was like, I got to figure out like how, how to long these. And I also, I did in 2019, a few months, I was also heavily long biased in 2018. But it just depends on the market sentiment. Like right now in OTCs, I'd be short bias. Um, and the best trades will probably be on the short side because it's just not a hot market. So if you get a runner, it's kind of a blessing and it's hard to predict that it's going to run because the OTCs are so dry. So we had NWBO was an interesting one this year. It went from like 80 cents to like two or 220, uh, pretty decent volume. And it had an awesome first red day where it went from like two bucks all the way down to like 40 or 50 cents. Um, unfortunately I was traveling that day, so I missed that, but that was probably the best OTC trade I saw of the year based on, you probably could have gotten like one or 200,000 shares and made, made, um, a nice chunk of change there if you traded it, um, and had patience. 